Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Start with data binding, but then we'll talk about two controls that will allow us to bind data in a grid-like fashion or in a list-like fashion. So let's start with data binding. It's been around ever since I started building software on the Windows platform uh, way back in, what, 93. Uh, and so data binding is a process of taking some data and associating it to visual elements on a user interface. So in our case, we would take something like a, just a plain old CLR object, a car object, a book object. And those would have properties. A book object would have maybe uh, the book image, the author, the title, things of that nature. Uh, and then we would want to present each instance of book in a collection of books on screen to the user in a grid-like fashion. We may want to have the book image on the top. We might have the title overlaying that image. We might have a short description below it, the author's name below that. So we get to create a little template how each individual instance of book will be represented in the, uh, in the user interface. And uh, so that's how what the grid view would allow us to do. The list view is exactly the same, except it works more in a uh, in a single column fashion. We'll show an example of that a little bit later. But as you can see, I've got a project called XBind Data Example for reasons that'll become obvious in just a moment here. And uh, I've already started working on this a little bit. You can see that. Let me call your attention to a book class here in the models folder. And this is a simple class. It's when I say plain old CLR object, I just mean a simple class with properties. This doesn't even have methods, but it could. But this uh, simple book book class just has a book ID, title, author, and then a uh, cover image, which would be the uh, you know a, a reference to assets that I have here, image assets, one PNG, ten PNG. You can see as I hover over, we got some fake book covers here that I created. Alrighty, and um, below that I have another class in the same file. Ideally, would have separated that out, but uh, I delegate the responsibility to this class called Book Manager of creating new instances of book and adding them to a collection, uh, a list of book, and then returning uh, that list back to the caller. And inside of there, you can see that I have this uh, object initializer syntax to actually set uh, each of the book's properties to something unique. Um, again, just some lorem ipsum text for title, author, the, and the cover image. Okay. All right, so we'll use this method here in just a moment to get the information that will bind our grid to. But let's work on the grid itself. First of all, you can see here in the main page.xaml, I've already started laying out the layout grid. And this, uh, this page will have two rows. The top row will be where we do all of our work. The bottom row will just contain a text block. Later on, whenever we select one book, I want to show you the process of selection. Selecting one will grab the details and print them to that result text block there. But what we'll do for the majority of the time here is actually work on adding a grid view and binding it to data, data that we're going to grab from that book.cs uh, file that we created, that uh, the book manager class. Okay, so let's start by creating a grid view. And uh, one of the things you need to do with a grid view is we want to create a template how each individual instance of book will appear on screen. So to do that, I'm going to go uh, grid view dot item template. And the item template contains a data template. All right, and we'll, we'll come back and flesh some things out about this data template in just a moment. But inside of that data template, we can basically lay out how we want each instance of book to be represented on screen. We can use grids and stack panels, any of the controls that we've used that we've learned about up to this point. In this case, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I want to display an image of the book and then the title and the author. Maybe the title will be slightly larger font, author will be slightly smaller font. Okay, so uh, we'll start with an image. We'll then have two text blocks beneath that. And uh, the text block will be um, uh, the font size for the one that will contain the title of the book, uh, we'll make that like uh, 16 font size, and then uh, the one below it font size equal to maybe 10, make it real small. Uh, 
the image itself, I'm going to set the, uh, to make sure that the image is no larger than, oh, 150 pixels wide. So let's set the width equal to 150. All right, a lot of setup work here just to kind of get, get things rolling. Okay, so now uh, the next thing that I need to do is to tell the grid view what I'm going to bind to ultimately. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to uh, to uh, populate the item source property. I'm going to set it to a new type of binding, xbind, and we'll set it to a public property that we're going to create on our code behind called books. So I'm going to create a public property called books in my main page.xaml. Books will be of type list of book, just like what we will return from the book manager. Okay. Now I need to tell the data template what the data type is that it should expect to be working with. And so to do that, I'm going to um, set a property on the, uh, the data template called X data type. And I want to set it to type book. Now, in order to reference this class in my XAML, I need to add a XML namespace here up at the page level. So what I'm going to do is uh, type in XML NS data equals, and then I'm going to give it the, um, uh, the name of the application. So XBind data example, and then the, the namespace where my uh, book class is located, in this case in the models namespace, because I put it in the models folder, right? All right, so now that I have that, I should be able to do this, data book. Okay, next up, I'm gonna set a property of each of these controls equal to a property of the book, uh, the book class. So in this case, I'm going to set the source equal to xbind cover image. Here I'll set the text property and bind it to the title. And then finally, I'll set the text property of the second text block and bind it to the author's name. Now I'm getting a little blue squiggly here that the property visual tree can only be set once. See the mistake I made? I need to put this in a stack panel. Forgot that. Got a little ahead of myself there. That should fix that at, uh, that situation. Great. All right, so the only thing really left to do at this point is to uh, make sure that I create a public property on my main page.xaml.cs and populate that property with books. All right, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, uh, inside of our main page class, it can be public or private, it doesn't matter. Here, I'll go private. List of book, and we'll call it books. And remember, if you don't see it, I already had a, um, a using statement to the models namespace. Uh, that's if you don't get that, you can hit the control period on your keyboard and select it from the drop down list box. Okay, and then inside here, I want to initialize books. So I'm going to set books equal to book manager dot get books, and that will return me a list of books. And so at this point, I think we're ready to go. Let's run the application. Okay, and you can see that I get a number of books, 13 books. Now there's some formatting I could do here. I think I should center up the text right underneath the book itself. However, uh, and maybe add some padding and margins and things of that nature. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. Notice that the grid view, one of the qualities of grid view is that as you make it smaller in uh, width, you have fewer columns uh, and, and the rows are commensurate to that as well. Okay, let's uh, make a couple of quick changes to to the uh, to the template, uh, let's uh, set the set the whole thing the horizontal alignment equals center, and then definitely want to do that on each of the individual text blocks. All 
All right, that should look better. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But the next thing I want to be able to do is make a selection on one of these items and then retrieve information about that item. So what we're going to do is set two attributes of the grid view. First of all, I want to make it uh, clickable. Uh, so we're going to set an attribute called is item click enabled. And we'll set that equal to true. So now we can click on an item and receive an event handler as a result of that. And then to set the actual event handler, we want to uh, set the item click event to a new event handler. Grid view item click is just fine. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Let me go ahead and move some things around here so we can continue to see things on screen well. All right, so now back in the main page.xaml.cs, you can see that um, we're going to get an item click event args E, and E will give us the clicked item. So we want to grab that, and we're going to convert that into uh, an item of type book. So var book equals, and now we have the instance of book that was clicked on in our grid view. And so in our result, text block that was already added before we started working here. Let's put you selected and uh, we'll concatenate the book's title. Like so. Great. Let's run the application again. All right. Things look a little bit better with the centering and such. And you can see when I click on any of these items, you can see what was selected. Very cool. All right, and so there's a lot of uh, permutations on this idea that we can uh, that we can take. For example, this data template. Uh, what if we needed to use it in multiple spots? Well, we can actually treat this just like we would um, a uh, a style, and we can extract it from here. and put it in a page resource or even the application resource. All we need to do if we were going to reuse this in multiple places is to give it a key. Um, book uh, data template, something like that. And then I would remove that and set the item template equal to a static resource so just like we're using styles and then what did I call that book data template and it should work exactly the same as before let's make sure so again if there were multiple pages in our app that needed the same data template we could reuse it great and this is actually going to come in handy for us this little technique of extracting it out and then referencing it in an upcoming lesson when we take a more advanced approach to how we style this up. Now before we conclude this, I want to show you the exact same example except using the list view control. So look, it's almost identical in every way. Uh, the only difference is that I changed up how the data template is oriented. So I have one stack panel that's horizontal and so I have the image first on the left hand side, then I have another stack panel and to the right of it with a, the title and author kind of above each other. And you'll see how it's changed. But everything else about this example is identical. Just wanted to show you that it's essentially the same thing. Okay, One single column. Now inside of that column, we can do as much styling as we want to, but it's just a different look. Okay. All right, so in this lesson, we talked about data binding. We talked about the grid view. We talked about... Um, you know how to uh, how to create a data template how to use the binding statement to bind to the data uh, we looked at the difference between the grid view and the list view all right and we're gonna need these skills for pretty much every project we do from here on out so I hope you're paying attention let's continue building on this in the very next lesson we'll see you there thanks